I made a reply video to Logic Rolls the Dice's um, a video on meditation, and it was a pretty lame video that I made, uh, simply due to the fact that I'm not a trained <laughs> meditation teacher, and secondly, um, I don't really think that you can talk effectively about meditating, at least not with somebody that you haven't already established a very long rapport. Um, you understand where they're going, they understand where you're going. Um, due to the fact that the language that you use when you try to discuss things is very, very easily misconstrued or misunderstood. Um, you know, you start talking about things like, as I mentioned a while back, chakras and whatever. People might actually get the wrong idea as to what you actually believe on the subject. For example, a um, friend and I are constantly talking about the Muladhara Chakra, which is basically just the base point of the spine, I guess. It's just above the coccyx, where it just seems to be the center of gravity of the entire body, or at least your musculature and your bones. It's kind of like the, the hub of a bunch of spokes, your muscles being the spokes. And you have to sort of simultaneously, in order, in order, in order to, to stretch as many muscles as possible, you have to use, say, the, that area as sort of your base point, as your hub, and your muscles are all the spokes, and you have to tighten your muscles outward all at once uh, for certain purposes. Um, otherwise, you'll be stretching one muscle at the expense of tensing up another. So, okay, you want to talk about your ability to do that. You don't want to go into a great big song and dance every last time that you that you want to refer to it. So you start to refer to it as the root chakra or the base chakra or the muladhara chakra or whatever. Now, the person that I'm discussing this with knows that I don't believe in any of that. I don't believe that there are, is a subtle body. I don't believe that chakras actually exist. I don't believe any of that stuff. But due to the fact that somebody's already trodden this path millennia ago, they've developed a a, um, a lexicon, a vocabulary to discuss this. Him and I have fallen into the habit of just referring to it as the root chakra or muladhara or whatever. A third party coming in on the conversation would say, you guys are a couple of new age freaks who believe in things that for which there are no evidence. But we're not doing that at all, you see. We're actually just, we're using a, a lexicon but in our own way. Um, there's no danger of us assuming that the other person has just started to believe in all kinds of airy-fairy nonsense. We're talking about something that does seem to be demonstrable. Now, there are things, however, that I do believe one can discuss. <clears throat> and one of them is the sort of ongoing sort of exploration that I have of not so much refuting as, I guess, transcending the three classic laws of logic, uh, non-contradiction, non excluded middle, and identity. Now, I would like to, for certain purposes, transcend those. And one of the ways that, one of the first things that pops up, I guess, is what, you know, this is a chicken and egg thing. What comes first? Does an integrated view of reality come first. In other words, you, you, the paradoxes of existence of reality or whatever are already reconciled in your mind and you have to learn to be absolute. Yes, no, black, white, positive, negative, affirm, deny, etc. Is that learned? Is this business of splitting the world into two pieces, the true and the false, is that something that's learned, or is do we have to learn to integrate the true and the false? Do we have to learn to integrate or to unify or to reconcile the paradoxes? Are we born in a state of positive-negative thinking? Um, if it's A, then it can't be B at the same time. Or are we born the opposite? It's all just one thing, and we have to be taught what... We have to be taught that A is A. We have to be taught that you can't contradict yourself. You have to be taught um, that um, there's no excluded middle, whatever. Um, 
I tend to err on the side of taught. We have to be taught various things because before you know what anything is, or part of telling somebody what something is, is telling them what it's not. So if I'm going to teach my three month or two and a half month old son, I don't know, about a coffee pot, I have to teach him that you put coffee in it, but you don't put, I don't know, sulfuric acid in it and pour it out and expect people to drink it. It's meant to hold coffee. It's not meant to hold uh, vinegar. It's not meant to hold motor oil. It's not meant to hold ink. Um, part of what it's not is, or part of what it is, is what it's not. So in order, so I, I think that in order to teach somebody non-contradiction, you have to teach them affirmation first. In other words, you affirm that this is what I say it is, i.e. it's a coffee pot, and it's not a teapot, it's not an oil pot, it's not a vinegar pot, it's not a pea soup pot, um, it's not a, you know, a lava pot or whatever. You have to teach somebody what, it, what something is and what it is not. Uh, there seems to be certain things that we might recognize in terms of folkways or whatever, like a cup seems to be a cup throughout any culture. Um, but I don't really think that you can just show somebody who'd never seen a cup before what it is and expect them to understand what it is. That's kind of more the identity that I'm referring to here, not just something that might vary from one culture to the next, but just the fundamental nature of something what it is. Well, included in what it is is what it's not, and there you, you have non-contradiction and um, you know, identity and things like that. <clears throat> I tend to think, and this is just based upon a few ruminations, and I've never done any research on it, that, um, that we're born more or less with paradoxes reconciled because the paradoxes haven't even arisen yet. Um, we have to be taught the content of a paradox before we can see it as a paradox. So that strikes me as an absence of paradox prior to learning identity, prior to learning what paradox is, prior to learning what contradiction is and, and that sort of thing. So it looks to me as though identity is a learned thing. Non-contradictions are, non-contradiction is learned. Um, and I think that that says a lot about what, what our view of the cart and the horse should be in terms of um, our relationship to logic, our relationship to our tools. First we don't have tools, then we do have tools. Are these tools to become our master? Why should they be? We created them. <clears throat> so the tools of classical logic are just that, they're tools. They have to be learned and they have to be explained to someone who wouldn't notice them otherwise. So it looks to me as though non-contradiction has an aura of artificiality about it, I guess, or identity even, excluded middle, certainly, that reconciling paradoxes, integrative thinking, or unitive thinking doesn't have. We tend to think that trying to believe and not believe in something at the same time is impossible, but it's only impossible because we've been taught that it's impossible.